Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I swapped Mike, by the way. Okay, so I, I, I will use this mic now. Um, should, it should be fine, right? The, the, it should be loud enough, I think. Let me cancel the music. Mm. Let me change it to English or to Americanish. Okay. It's fine. So the first game was uh, Dragon Shire. This is the draft. Okay, I will just grab something to drink first, and I will go over the draft first, and then over the game. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if I do all. Uh, maybe you have some types. If you feel like you want to see, like, uh, yeah, I will do two games. You can actually just type which one you prefer out of those four games. I will uh, go over two games, I think, because like one one game can take up to like four minutes, really. In, uh, four minutes debated. Uh, four minutes because I have to be up for another world boss kappa. No, it will take like 40, uh, 40 minutes pretty much for one game. So yeah, I will grab something to drink, just decide which one I should start with. Okay, be back.
Well, whatever. I will have to find him later, I guess. Hopefully, it doesn't bite me, Kappa. Um, no, actually, this spider is not helpful. This one, it, it does. It is not the one that is hunting flies. This one is. Uh, this one is stupid. This one is stupid. Okay, so you say uh, first map and the last one. I mean, I guess I'll go with the first one anyway. If you don't have uh, your types, then I'll just go over the first one first. So, the first game is Dragonshire, and this is the draft for it, right? Uh, Liquid had first pick, so it was Zelot, Zelot's map choice. <coughs> they banned Anup, and Zelot's bans Teaches. First pick Genji. Genji is obviously really strong on this map because of, like, he's, he's like semi global, right? He's like, with his mobility with the level 1 D talent and, he, and his E, he can, you know, uh, rotate on the map really quickly and he can gank top lane especially uh, really easily. So like, you should get, like, if, if one teams with Genji, then like top lane is really, uh, like, something that will be played around. Like, either the team with Genji will look to, you know, uh, gank that top laner or the other team will just try to get a top laner that can somehow like deep push safely or maybe contest the shrine safely too like with the with the thing in mind that Genji could possibly gank him so you kind of want to make like, you kind of want to have a top laner that is not likely to die to Genji right you don't want to have uh, I don't know Zagara against Chen plus Genji that can gank, you know, something like that, or like whatever. Even Illidan against Chen, right? Like, if Genji comes to dive and he catches Illidan without E, like the Illidan might be dead, you know? So the first pick was uh, <clears throat> was Genji for Team Liquid. Zelots went with the Hacker, which is like obviously really good on this map because of Global and he's good uh, solo laner plus Uther, which is like, you know, Uther in 2017. Why not have him, right? And he's good against Genji, because against Genji you want a suffer that can uh, shut him down a little bit, right? Like you either you want either Malfurion with, I mean, now Malfurion is nerfed, but like still, you know, you wanted the Malfurion for the Twilight Dream when he comes in with the Dragon Blade and he's kind of useless then. Or you want like Uther that can stun him, because you don't want Genji to just do whatever the fuck she, uh, he wants. <laughs> I thought the spawn there is ba baiting me. Okay, not yet. I just felt something on my foot. Monkey ass man. <clears throat> or Uther, because Uther can stun him. So he can't really get that much value out, out of the reflex and just like auto attacking your back lane for free. So. Plus, obviously, Genji, um, Uther is really good with Genji, right? So that's a common normal face speed and double pick. Then Muradin, which is interesting. And uh, which is. Uh, which is not going to be the grip top Muradin Kappa, because they also have Sonia, but yeah. It's interesting that they went with with Muradin actually. Against Uther already, you know. Hmm. Muradin Greyman, okay. You could you could argue that Greyman is not really needed. If they were like scared of him, they could ban it. Was like, oh, but they don't have to because they have Genji and Genji is like have a fine matchup against Greyman because of the block at level 7 so plus that op that opens the Cassia pick for Zealots later on because you know they have two uh, AA based heroes you know Vala is slightly better against Cassia like Greyman is still fine against Cassia if you have some CC he actually deals damage you know but in this setup, probably not that much though. So, uh, th those two picks are kind of weird, but whatever. Now on two bands, they banned Maltil. Because like, if you open with the Haka, right, that uh, instantly tells that you will look to go uh, double tank composition. And technically, Maltil is good against that, right? So they're banning it, but it's it's a fine second ban, right? Like, and uh, Liquid is banning Aurel because they don't want to play against like uh, double support Vala, I guess, or something like that, you know, or just overall like Uther Aurel. Aurel is also good on this map because of the on the rotations. She has really nice wave clear. So like if they get Uther, Vala, Aurel, that's 
pretty strong core, but there's still Tassadar, and I I would actually ban Tassadar because I think Tassadar is, if if I would ban a double support, you know, because Tassadar is really good against uh, Genji. I think Tassadar is one of the best. Maybe not sure how it goes for competitive, but in Hero League for sure. He removes the block really fast, and at 13 he just denies him so hard. It's in, it is insane. It, like Tassadar allows you to pick like AA character against Genji, so. ATC plus Tassada is the peak. And also the Tassada which like helps Zealots in the wave clearing, right? Because like Ute, uh, ETC does not have that much wave clear and that's what they have on rotation for now. Mm, so the Tassada is a nice pickup of this now. And they leave the carry for last, so they can either go with Vala, they can go with Gul'dan, they can go with, you know, Cassia as they did. So th you kind of want to leave the last pick. Like Tassadar, they were sure about, I guess, because they just wanted double support. So they leave the last pick to just, you know, figure it out what's, uh, what hero will be the best for them. Um, Liquid finishes up with uh, Sonia and Rekka. I mean, they didn't see the Cassia yet, I guess, because they could you know, possibly pick Malfurion, but I mean, then they have another route that Uther can use his level 7 against. Plus, you know, like the Silence still. Uh, and like, they kind of need a cleanse too, I guess, for the Sonya or, or even the Genji or Greyman, so like they couldn't, I'm not saying that Malfurion is a pig or something, but just saying that there's some support too. I guess they had to go with this, maybe. Plus Sonya on top lane. So Liquid has no globals, Zealots, Zealots have one. There's a chance, I guess, for like Liquid to kill the Dihaka actually, like Sonya against Dihaka plus the Genji can rotate there. So like they could look for peak offs on top. But... In terms of like uh, Moshpit denies, they only have Muradin basically. I mean, Sonya can keep up the Q, but she's probably most likely gonna just use it uh, to engage. So it's only like Muradin stun, which, uh, you know, Uther can easily, oh wait, <laughs> easily cleanse, generated. No one plays cleansed, right? But yeah, if he would go for cleanse, which he technically could, but we'll see. But he also can just divan shield that. Because... <clears throat> I don't think Castia would require the Divan Shield, you know, I mean, depends how the team fights looks like, but I think it is fine for them if they go for Moshpit to use Divan Shield on Moshpit. Because Castia should be able to somehow survive, like the Sonya is the target that can put the most damage, I mean, yeah, Sonya is basically the, tar the hero that can put the most damage on Castia. so if Sonya goes harm on Castia, maybe you want Divan Shield there, but... So that's the draft, right? <coughs> Mm. No, no, I forgot to buy items. Twice. Okay. Once. Measure twice, buy once, or something like that. Okay, Zelda is on left. Team Liquid on right. I, I don't want to do like casting or anything. So let's just speed it up a little bit. One. Let the battle begin. Okay, so Liquid is instantly looking for a pick off on top, but you know, obviously that's not gonna happen at the very beginning. Like, what is most likely to happen is that uh, Dihaka will burrow mid and look for Lick, the so called uh, hero Lick Dihaka trap, you know. But even even if he will not try to do that, he will obviously go mid to get some additional, like, uh, essences. So. Well, but that, that is fine, like, Liquid is aware of that, that uh, they are not going to win uh, the mid trade, so they just want to make sure that they don't get uh, denied from rotating, because this op op often happens in Hero League too, right? One team just pushes faster mid, and then he denies you from reaching bottom lane, because you can just, you know, go this way, you have to go around to get to bottom lane, and... He mostly just gonna either lose a hero that just walks in here like a monkey or just gonna lose the experience wave. So Liquid tries to deny that. 
because they realize that they will lose the mid clash or they just don't want to even try it you know and they are setting up people on bottom that can either try to clear this fast so they don't get like double pushed on bottom and mid and they're also preparing a trap for the Haka in case she moves and he moves like unsafe way but that would be really stupid of someone if he actually goes like this like you can make a mistake like that because you don't see opponents so obviously they have to be doing something you don't have to greet you don't have to run you know for the experience on top uh if you know opponents are preparing something fishy you know that, that would be like instantly like super tilting death for the uh, on the team speak because it, it, it can happen because you know that something is wrong you know? and there's no need to greet for one minion in the early game okay? so just because the liquid was started on bottom they were somehow able to push this wave before people rotate from mid so they don't they don't lose ammo on bottom and on mid you know which is like eventually important because if, if you are losing rotation on mid and bottom then eventually you're gonna start losing uh, two reds too and so they are still looking to abuse the top lane with the gen gp so like this is going to go in a way that uh, liquid most likely is gonna lose some two reds on mid but they will trade for the top two reds so the nothing going to happen at them anytime soon really it's like if this dragon will probably not be taken too fast just because of the Genji pressure you know and the global for is not being on top so it's not like the global can join and have okay so liquid is looking for like heavy heavy push on top just trading it for bottom huh I mean, it is fine because like it is unlikely that they are going to get the kill for four man against four man, right? You're not gonna kill Cassia with uh, etc Uther being close to her, right? That's too much CC. You might end up dead for trying to do that. Um, so I guess that's fine for now. They don't have like. You know, the Zalots have better mid lane in this case. So they eventually are going to push two lanes. <coughs> it would be really cool if they could get uh, well uh, from top lane. So they feel they're denied the uh, sustain of the hacker. So this is the moment if none of the if none of the team can get the shrine it is usually like either a force to take the shrine or just like both teams goes for easy or one and the other invades or one is just a monkey and doesn't do anything does not realize the situation on the map and just doesn't start the easy camp but just pops you know and then oh shit they have easy camp now you know we might actually lose a dragon or just die somewhere else because we have to put people to deep push bottom and then they will prepare a gank on top and you know But that's, they used, the Liquid obviously probably keep that in mind that Zealot is doing the easy camp, so they should probably move someone to top so they can get both shrines and pressure mid eventually to take it. Like if you look at it, like what, what uh, Zealots have to interrupt the uh, Dragon Cup really? It is Tassadar. I mean on the other hand, you know, uh, Liquid only has Murad in stun to, uh, to stop someone from approaching, like uh, Zealots have ETC stuns, knockback and Uther stuns, so like for them it could be slightly easier to deny, uh, to deny the deny, you know, at least. Okay. Hmm. I mean, technically, you know, uh, they they could just because they get bottom, they could have Murad in here, which is like decently safe to just keep it, like force keep it. That or that tap to tell them that the easy is being taken. Obviously, if like they allow, if opponents allow uh, minion wave to get to the fo uh, to the two red lane, I mean, obviously, like few seconds before that already was happening. Like the easy is camp by now, but 
they could technically rotate to mid and try to force it if they already prepared that situation, you know. Okay, so there's another attempt. They try to get the camp plus uh, kill the Dihaka, which was which was kind of maybe overextending because there's no wall for her. But it is hard to kill Dihaka with 50 essence. So this is pretty bad because like uh, Zelot was winning the rotation, right? And they were not able to pressure the mid to take the decay because if they get if they pressure the decay, uh, you know the decay just pushes mid and they de push the easy. Now since like Zelot still has stronger four man or three man three man or whatever, and plus they know Genji is top, like Zelots can push bottom and one trade is already dead, so like they're most likely gonna get. Uh, nice damage on this front front wall and kill the easy from Liquid. So Liquid didn't really get much. They didn't even get that easy camp, right? Like the situation from like uh, Zelots getting the easy, like uh, Liquid didn't get the push on bottom fort with the fact that they pushed the lane faster. They didn't. Uh, they didn't uh, pressure mid either. They were. They had no. Uh, like uh, gank prepared for top lane on anything they captured both shrines though but they did nothing with it as i said they could just get some free damage on the turret instead they went for the easy which is like in the end it doesn't give anything and opponents are still pushing on mid because like during the same time genji had an attempt at killing the hacker and it didn't work out so i could go back but the replay system is pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure they could use the time when opens were missing, which obviously they used to do the easy camp to just push with the minion waves here. Like they had, they have Graham and, you know, Redgar, it is very likely that they get one to it at least. Or at least they take it to 50% of HP or something. I don't know what was the rest of the people doing when, uh, when they were capping this. Where were they capping it as three people? Oh, no. Because they did their easy camp really late. Way after this was capped and way after the minion crashed. So they are looking on some... Pactor? Well, that's not gonna work probably. Like Muradin has no mana. Yeah, the only thing they can do is like maybe show up here to pressure them off so Greyman can try to de push the easy but this is as i said really tough situation for them now because like op like zealots four man three man is just like stronger and it's not that easy to kill anyone here because they have a lot of cc's and this actually might just be disaster Well, they, get, they did get the deny. I mean, they they cleared up the easy camp eventually, but that costed them one death. And what I said will be dead is dead. Uh, which is the front wall. Which makes... Um, like, taking, like, taking bottom lane, like, taking the walls, and especially forts on this map, gives you... Uh, really nice map control or like or the objective control because like if both walls are up it's hard to really uh, do anything on bottom lane like force something hard you know opponents will have to be either inside or like in the middle kind of and you have to have some pick like you know gap closers and cc to get the kill so this is like good for uh, zealots really they could look for like power plays on this side of the map with like etc slides you know because like, he is not going to slide into turrets because turrets are gone mm, so muradin is dead sonia is not controlling top lane obviously zealots will take bottom because they get a kill and i mean they already had it so as i said now there will be a situation most likely in which it is zealot trying to capture 
while denying opponents from denying them the capture, right? But Zelot has the ETC stun, Uther stun, you know, and like that's how they actually like, can zone pretty nicely, especially early game. Uh, so that's most, most likely going to be Drake for Zelot soon. Maybe even uh, Regga. Wait, it's, um, I mean, I guess they didn't bother uh, stunning him or something, I don't know. Because I mean, it would be only them two dealing damage, obviously, Shot just wants to capture as fast as he can, so Sonya don't, doesn't get the deny, so it's not worth to bite teammate into stopping, uh, stop capping that DK, but yeah. Genji's magic, Genji's balance, you know, is making sure the game is, the game, you know, remains equal. Nothing gets, no, no one snowballs with a DK, no, 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 not on a Genji watch. So now that's, you know, the hard camp doesn't give that much actually. It created awkward situation for Liquid maybe, because I, I mean, Sonya was not in position to like, de uh, you know, capture the top lane. They could maybe, like, if I could go back in the replay, I could check it better. But when the Muradin died, they could maybe look for a, a, like counter kill on top lane eventually. Or just make sure that they hold this because this hard camp will not really get that much. Yes, it will like uh, stop the hacker from potentially like burrowing somewhere, but uh, you see where like Liquid is now and Zelot's already starting bottom. So like the hacker probably is not will not need to burrow bottom, but uh, Liquid could look potentially into invading bottom why the hard camp's pushing because the hard camp is not going to get any kind of value now because the wall is dead the only thing the hard camp can do is just like make it harder for zero to decide whether they want to five man bottom uh, hard camp if liquid would be in position you know so let's see if they can even do something with that hard camp like get some pressure somewhere else seems like no on the other hand like uh zealots probably can push with it uh, what could Liquid do actually with the hard camp is hard force top lane because they need to expect that Zealots are doing this hard camp from what happened just a few seconds ago on bottom lane. Like there's no way you know Zealots would just ro randomly rotate top lane to get uh, easy I mean hard camp when they have a hard camp bottom and they saw I, I think they saw the Genji top light eventually. I mean I can't go back in time. But... I think they saw them rotating through. Yeah, they saw the Genji uh, interrupting and then going top lane, so. They know they are like kind of free to do this. Yeah, like. The game man probably shouldn't even like bother staying top lane as long as there's no hard camp pushing. He could exchange uh, Regar or mid and Regar could attempt to go top two and they could look for hard dive, you know. They wanted to do that hard time, uh, hard dive maybe, but that one lost his half HP. They're still gonna do it anyway, but... To be honest, they don't have to look for a kill, they can just look to make sure that they get, get the four, you know. Unless they are 100% sure that they get the kill. They get it, so it's worth, you know. But if, maybe if the Sala Rot is faster, they don't get the kill and then it gets upward. But since it's a hard, like it, it sometimes gets upward if you do something like that only with win, minion wave, because the minion wave usually dies pretty quickly. So if you fail to get the kill, you're most likely not gonna get the force because the minions either die or like, you know, like they died and the two red shots at you. So you need to be sure that if you do the hard die, hard die, you have to have in mind what you can do. Can you kill the hero or you, ju you should just pressure him away, but your focus is to get the fort, right? Here they could get the kill and fort afterwards. So like, as I said, e e even, especially if they get the hard cam, you know, obviously the game and should look to de-push it, but since uh, Liquid showed for top, Liquid, I mean, Zelots will just you know, try to trade equally. So Grayman for like, what, one minute wasn't doing anything and he could be on mid. Because you can't even stay here, like, you're not gonna even gather experience here, right? He could be on mid and that would allow Grayman, I mean, Regar to rotate top faster, maybe. It does. It didn't change much anyway, because they get the kill. The Tassadar couldn't rotate either to help, so like, it's fine, I guess, but maybe they could... 
uh, start this because you know Greyman would be uh, on mid lane now, so he could join the hard camp and they could steal the hard camp from them. Because that's something that they should look for. Pretty sure. I mean, at some point they have to rotate to make sure they don't lose the uh, bottom uh, keep wall, obviously, right? So they also have to keep that in mind. But I think they could have time to get the hard camp. Like, they could even leave Sonya to finish it eventually. Okay, so it seems like they actually want to use the fact, but I don't like it. Because this is really hard. You, 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 I don't know what you have to have. <laughs> to get the kill in such situation because you're gonna go behind and minions will aggro on you and minions deal shit tons of damage you know and even though it's 3 man it is still not a 3 man that is easily killed you know the hacker can burrow <laughs> spender just this time moving safely you know <laughs> but uh, he actually didn't die the last time it was man right? yeah, it was man So the minions like didn't aggro, they went on the fort, but eventually the fort will die and it, they will, all of them might, most of them might aggro. Okay, so they actually have the cleanse, okay. Which is fair. Yeah, now the minions aggro, they aggroed on Splendor. Boom, Splendor died to the Nexus forces. They all always kill me too. But during all of that, they could have the hard camp. Like that's what they should do, pretty much. Get the hard camp. And prepare, like, cause you, you're not gonna, like, you're not gonna kill them, um, unless, unless they thought, like, they can actually win that format or something, but it doesn't look like a format that you can win, and this is dead, like, it is dead, and it is fine that it's dead, you trade that fort for fort, not the best, but it's fine, uh, plus, you could get more value, cause you could get potentially the hard cam, right, I mean, they forced the dehacker off, but, it doesn't matter because like top lane is like whatever top lane is the worst fucking lane on this map anyway you can never do anything with here uh, with it even though you might have hero league teammates that will just fucking push top lane instead of going mid for free call but whatever uh, and even though they are like both green one is regular one is troll and instead of going face they just go breach i don't know um uh, as i said like they they could get this hard camp, get the mid experience, make sure that they get in time to bottom lane to not allow uh, zealots get too much damage on the front wall or no damage at all. They probably they probably could just stop the hard camp at the turret really. I don't think zealots will push that much. They would probably look to rotate mid if the mid is in, situ in a situation like this, right? Like uh, that the minions are pushing, but that also probably would not happen if Liquid first get the heart and then like clear the mid or something, but whatever. So if they get the one more kill, they could pressure this gate, which is uh, what I would do 100%. If they don't get the kill, which seems they don't, they... I guess should rot in mid and put some damage on the mid, open them up a little bit more. You think it's... I mean, granted, they could still pressure this. Like maybe one turret, and uh, I just recall the Haka so she starts getting the top lane, but starts the pushing the top lane and eventually gets to the shrine, right? But I don't think it's, it is worth if they didn't get one more kill. So, probably just like making sure that if they have the opportunity to open them up slightly more, just open it slightly more, which is like looking for something on mid, maybe. Oh. Oh, but they, seems, they still want to get that one to earth. Okay, I like it though. Yeah. I, like I thought they might just decide to not do it. Because bottom lane is a really good lane on this map, you know. It is a like, it is a like, kind of win condition lane, right? So You have the most amount of camps on it and it's... It's the lane through which you win the games on this map most of the time, right? Have you ever seen someone winning from top? Probably in NA it happened that they win through top, but I don't think it ever happened in top in Europe. I mean, maybe when Leoric got released and there was the meta of like speed pushing Leoric and also back then there was also like a Chen top lane speed push meta. May maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it even happened in NA sometimes, but I, I don't think so. 
Like during that meta, maybe you know the keeps were falling. So that's fine. I like it. They sent the hacker to me, and I like this. Like they could either like pressure the mid, open them up, which like I usually prefer opening them up. But since this is a win condition lane and uh, Zilots have the global advantage, it's like good to pressure the like win condition lane, I guess. So there will be probably just camps. Oh, they see this. They see this, and. It is very likely that they are aware that Zelots might go just for the easy camp because that's like such moment in the game when there's nothing really to do so just gonna like trade easy camps or something but they saw the hacker being really aggressive but the thing is the hacker might be able to just burrow away if she has it if he has it so like even if Genji moves there they might not get that kill plus they see the Genji regardless so. But I don't think they had the... I mean, they know the Genji was bottom, but this is still... This still cost her some HP, so... And on the other hand, it could be like also greedy for Darkmoor to do that, because they could actually not do the easy camp. It is very likely that Zelot goes for it, but they will not... They can't be sure, you know, very well. Like, they, they, Zelot does not need that easy camp. So they could move uh, towards top lane to get the like, hard camp, get the top experience, or make sure that the Aka is safe doing this. You know, they could actually like abuse Dark Mook here. Especially that they also had like full knowledge of uh, Team Liquid position. So like, they lost, lost some experience and lost the D on the Aka. Hmm, I don't know if this is if this is going to work. It probably is going to work because like Zelot does not have to force the fight on that easy camp, especially that the hacker uh, waste. I mean, used uh, her D right? His D. Fuck her D. What the fuck? How can you know? She can have a D to paint it. They don't have to fight for it. Like, usually people will get paid, ah, let's just fucking fight, because why not, you know, it's fun. We can deal damage and numbers are fun, right? But they don't have to do that. If they feel like they can pressure it, it's like kind of good spot, I guess, because they have more speed, they have whatever that's other picks at, at 10 is good, I guess. The hackers here we damage, like, and uh, Cassias, obviously. But they have the... Uh, global so like technically they should have in mind that okay they could win the map uh, map wise so they don't have to force like obvious five v fives because it can backfire they're not forced to do that it's not like this easy with just like super hard push bottom lane you know anytime soon ah but sunny is moving top actually huh so that, that changes the situation a little bit, because I thought that Liquid will uh, like try to stay 5-man just in case the Dihaka wants to borrow, because the Dihaka shouldn't want to borrow, because he has no D. But that's good for them, they will not, like, Zelots will not fight in minions, because the minions will, like, you know, aggro on each other, so they're not, not gonna get, like, unnecessary damage or something. It is really important if you fight on camps, don't fucking fight if the camp is already captured. That's way too much damage. You don't want, like, it, the camps, you know, it skill shots and deal a lot of damage. So once it captured, just fucking pass. Uh, the hacker, the hacker actually borrowed. Okay, Splendor is dead. Rip Splendor. So they're probably gonna lose the bottom wall. Wait, is he dead? Right. Or just, I mean, again, they could, Zalot could just open mid, which um, I would probably just open mid. Like, they're for it, yeah. Because the easy camp will take some time to clear. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's really nice. Um... Um, so they will not get the well, well sadly, but you know. 
it's still it, like as I said, I don't like I, I expected this Sonya to like stay around because yes, they can get the easy. Yes, Zealots shouldn't fight for it, but if for some reason they feel like ah, let's broke back, let's just fight, you know. But they actually didn't fight. They, I mean, Polyg went in, but I, I mean, it was fine, I guess. They just abused the regular position afterwards. Like they weren't looking into like insta dive on the easy camp. Like Mopsha didn't queue in. He maybe could have, cause uh, but I don't think they see Sonya yet. He might been just still in the rotation, but. As I said, like it is not a spot that Zealots should want to fight for, but if they if they saw Sonya on top later, I guess I guess they just when they were bush camping, they spotted the Sonya, so they decided to abuse the and the uh, uh, regard. That was really nicely played by Zealots. Like they, they, they moved. If if there's an opportunity to get something, they get something. If there's nothing that they can do, they just pass. Uh, they just pass. You know, they let them capture the camp. They didn't like overcommit for it, but they then saw uh, Regal out of position and abused it. They probably spotted the Sonya on top too, so that helped them with the call. And after that, they opened the wall. So that's very really good. Uh, well, that's like kind of good rotation, right? Because, but they like Zeros are aware of this. Zaroni was like, I will capture this. Oh shit, no, no, I'm being a fucking monkey. I can't capture this. Like, they have, I don't want to equalize now. My teammate killed one. On bottom, let's not do the hero league equalization move. Let's not feed on the opposite lane, as always happen in my hero league games. You know, we are getting kill on bottom lane, but some fucking equalizer has to die on top lane. And voila, guys, we have equal game again. No comebacks, no snowballing. Just fucking peak no. I mean, they have no Muradin, right? I don't know why actually Muradin all of all is bottom. That's kind of awkward. Because they should just be like moving aggressively, probably. Because, like, as I said, like Zealots have the map win condition, kind of, right? They have the global. And the power of Liquid stays in like team fights, or the, the ones that they can get like 4v5s, uh, right? Or like or a peak offs with Genji or something. But they were not aggressive enough here. Because like the, this foreman has really little chances to kill anything here, right? Like, I mean, I don't know, like, even, even Tassa there should be enough to just save Mopsha and then again, like, Mopsha would have to insanely fuck up or like, Grandpa would have to sleep or something. Like, they would need to have Sonya. At some point, I think they could just let Genji top lane, really. I think Sonya gives them more in the foreman than Genji does. Plus, Genji can rotate way faster from top lane to mid lane. So they should just... Plus, you know, he can get killed. So he can actually, you know, push top lane. And pressure the Haka even, right? Not by much, but still. Like, it is, like this kind of fights are really hard for Liquid. They are just not gonna work. Like that's why I was. It was awkward to see Murad in here when they had to use. Not really had to, but could have used the window to just go super monkey on top lane and look for the Dihaka. Like they were aware. Like Zarmoni kinda moved in time, but they still could just move, you know, <clears throat> and maybe find him. I yeah, always call the Hakashi. I don't know, man. The Hakashi just sounds like honor to be it. Um, so, I mean, this game technically should be worse and worse for the Liquid, right? They don't really get any power spike or anything. Like, the block is just denied by Tasada. Later on, he should get Shrink Ray or like whatever it is, nullification, right? And then, like, Kenji just doesn't do anything, you know? Plastic if only, like, solo support.
plus still, you know, the, the wind condition lanes. This is really annoying situation to be at on Dragonshire. If you you are behind, especially as a shot caller, you know, you are behind, opponents have uh, global, right? And you look at the map, right? You see, fuck, we don't have this wall. So like fights on mid are like uh, greedy, you know. We don't have a fucking bottom lane at all. So fights are, uh, on bottom are also fucked. How are, if we get a comeback, how we end the game? Okay, how we get a keep? Fuck, there's full mid lane, there's full bottom lane. Shit, we need like two wipes at least, if not three, to do something, you know? So it is really like annoying uh, short call situation too. Especially, uh, plus you have you have no global enemies. I guess we just. Yeah, there's, there's Sonya kill maybe. Yeah, that's what I was talking about just a second ago. That maybe they should consider swapping the top lane. Like they could make Genji be top laner, because like it's less likely for Genji to die and more likely for Sonya to die. And I think Sonya is kind of needed for them to do something. Uh, for for against four, right? Yeah. So that might be a dragon. Mm, dragoon for the lot. No. Can just balance hero. I rotated the whole map in a one second, but the hacker is even more balanced on this map. <coughs> okay, so they just that's fine. Just they just like they just like Zero needs to just to keep in mind how much they can get of it. Like any damage they did on bottom is fine. They need to realize, can we pressure mid? Uh, they, they can possibly go, uh, they could even maybe just go full monkey, you know, and just try to get the keep. Like, e e e even just die for it. Cause like, what will, like, they will not die all, obviously. Or at least they should aim to not die all, but they could sacrifice like fucking Drake and like two people to just like brute force the keep just because of how, uh, a good situation they have of the, on the map. Like opponents will not be able to like get keep. They might even barely take a fourth if like Uther and Tassadar survives. You know. Uh, let's see what they do here. If they actually manage to get a keep, or they will just do it more passive, or maybe they just win a team fight or something. Because like obviously like this is moment when like <laughs> it's actually as I said like even even if Liquid kills them here, it doesn't change much. Like. Liquid won't be able to get much. They're probably just gonna get a wall if they would wipe them here. <laughs> and if, like, even the wall might be hard to take, you know? That's that's fine damage, you know? I think they could go monkey, or they could, they could like, call like that, you know, just like, let's be monkeys and let's just, like, take as much damage as we can and, like, we're fine sacrificing to people. Or the Drake. The Drake would. I think the Drake should be just smashing. You know, it's fine if he, if he if only he dies. Like there's not that much they will do. But like again, this is fine damage. Zilots has the uh, like map comp, like better map comp. So and they have bottom open and keep damage really nicely. So this is bad though, because now they are still. Uh, somehow in the team fight, but they're not not dealing damage to the keep at the same time so they are denied from getting more value even if they lose the team fight now right and the uh, fights pressure i mean you know moves forward so it's getting closer to the structure so it makes eventual like a value for liquid to be bigger like the closer they are to a name structure right okay there's a human mosquito that's what we are talking about in the draft that Oh, so he decided, no, I, I like this more. I like Divine Shield more than Divine Shield. So he opted opt to go for Hand of Protection instead of Divine Shield. So he that's like a trade-off that he can cleanse the Mosh, but also have nice damage and stun, which like this is good against Genji, obviously too. Um, but it's really hard for like Liquid to avoid getting Mosh treated, I guess. I mean, they need to keep a stun and cleanse Muradin, I guess, but that's like really, you know. 
So that's like that's one of the offers. They can they can push more, right? But that's really fine. That's really fun. Uh, really fine, you know. Mm. Like they get as much as damage as they could the safe way, and they uh, uh, got one kill after that too. They could potentially pressure if they feel like they have the ultimates, but. Uh, they have all alts down and uh, Liquid still have Ancestral. So, I'm not sure if they will want to push with the easy. They could, but they don't have the alt. That could open opportunity to push bottom though if the pick off something. Or like, nice damage. Okay. That they, could, that, that they can use. Yes. Whether they will want to do that. Remains, remains a question because there are waves stacking so they could just like soak that and get all camps and I don't know at 16 pressure mid and then eventually top lane or something but I, I feel like it's fine to push bottom but uh, it is already recalled and they don't have the cooldowns and this is fine this is good like it's like two levels difference uh, they can regain map control get the camps and with the camps they could push mid or, or top eventually or just again bottom at 16 you know like with another pair of camps you know but they for sure want to get the top lane eventually so yeah plus like this is an easy camp deny so opponents can get that right camps for losing team are good in a way that they stop the opposing lane lane from like you know getting to their side of the map so it regains the map control like it's not going to really push like like easy come from here when when the lane's pushed but like it will get the lane back to like mid at least or like push even eventually so you don't have to care about bottom in terms of map control you might still need to care about bottom because of experience but yeah mm. It's super bad, like it's super bad, they just can't do ni anything now. And like, this is a moment when like Shortcaller was just looking what they can do now. Um, I mean, okay, I guess let's just do the easy camp, because like, we can't really uh, invite invade them on their easy. Uh, oh shit, by the way, I was looking if we can invade, but they have still fought, oh my fucking god, kill me, you know. So that's, that's, really, that, that's a really tough spot to be as a Shortcaller. Like what Liquid can do. Like, I mean, they have to pass what they have to pass. They don't want to get uh, to let the Zealots get more damage on bottom. Uh, they probably just want to. They they will have to contest their push somewhere. But it will be sixteen to no sixteen, and um, the hacker will split push. I guess what they should do the, the Zealots is. Uh, the Haka top lane push mid and just move to bottom at 16 and just stay bottom let this let the Haka slowly get top if uh, Liquid uh, sends someone over to top You either push bottom or if you are closer to mid you push mid or dive on mid or something I mean obviously they don't have to dive because they are in a really good position plus they have the global on so they, they kind of win them up, right? So they could time they could time the hard camp D push this first, capture it slightly later, like, I don't know, with Tassadar maybe, that was on mid. So the Liquid doesn't get the time to like, move to bottom, D push it and then get back on bottom. I mean, move to top, D push, get back to bottom. Well, it doesn't matter, random objective spawn. My swap things around now. So I expected Zelots to get slightly more value after the kill on easy camp and the fact that they take the easy camp, took the easy camp, but seems like they are not able to get anything, which is pretty bad because they have 16 to know. They have the ultimates back. They could just play the camps better than this. This is actually pretty bad. Like, it is pretty bad. Like, they give away so, a lot of opponents for free to, uh, a lot of experience for free to opponents. During the time they could like pressure opponents. That's That's pretty bad. But eventually they move to bottom. But that's, you know, the hard camp is the pushed and the hacker needs to care about mid now. That, that could be played way better. But... Why is video still man? Well. 
Yeah, just make sure to have Discord open and if you see boss spawning, just tell me and we swap instantly, okay? And thanks for the 8 months. I just before the analysis, I was doing fucking three bosses, you know, two Karandas, one Xarka, and I get shit, nothing. I even did the boss with my main. Luckily, I didn't die though, but yeah. Mm, okay, oh wait. That's half quart. If Sonya's moving bottom, that, that's super half quart then. Uh, I mean, I don't know, that's super half quart actually, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> That's super bad. That they either they either five man here till sixteen, or they send I don't know Muradin to bottom and they try to capture dra Dragon with like Genji being like here, uh, Muradin going here, and then like they group with Sonya and Genji from top to here. So. You know, they, they get the Drake. Of course, that will cost them a keep, but I think the keep will fall anyway. Because Kenji stop. Maybe, maybe they can definitely die. Okay, they can definitely die. Okay. I mean, they didn't see the Genji though, obviously. So that's fine, but it just comes back to the Zealots playing it poorly with the camps. They did not use two level advantage and the fact that they got like three camps at all you know they just let liquid get easily to 16 and they're moving they're creating a situation in which there's a 5v5 possible which they they don't have to do they don't have to like i don't know how much of like map idea they have now they don't have much map idea now but they have bottom uh, taken they don't have to capture this yet, you know, obviously they want, so they tell Zalmoni to get that and they rotate towards top because they expect that, you know, obviously like Liquid will move there too. I mean, they saw the Genji, uh, but they highly dislike this because uh, they didn't use the two levels, the camps, and now Zeros is giving opponents a 16-16 fight. Uh, on a lane that is good for Liquid because there's no fort, plus lane, uh, I mean, Minion situation is in favor of uh, Liquid, so this could be, uh, this is probably the best situation for Liquid at the moment. Let's see what happens. Stun happens. Mobshot tilted happens, okay, good start, good start. Not really, he can get tilted by such, such stun. He doesn't even have stack, so he didn't felt, he didn't felt anything probably. Okay, so they, they, the Zalots didn't get caught in between minions, this is really important. <coughs> but obviously, like, Liquid needs to pressure, like, they just, they, just, they just need to go and just fight, fight them, because that's the only way, only uh, map position when they get can get a fight, but it's not easy. It's just not easy at all. The one ultimate from the uh, like uh, it's important that Splendor hits the ancestral in case they want to tell out Sonya or something. Yeah. Genji gets nullified. So that's a good pre ancestral, I would say. I mean, maybe he could wait a little bit more so they turn around. Yeah, he could. I, I think he could learn. I mean, it, it's, it's important for him to keep an eye out, but like, she still had the nerf of steel. I think she, he could keep it up maybe for the Genji, you know. Or if they tear on Sonya, just throw it on Sonya. Because she would probably survive with the nerf of steel, you know. They could, they could maybe win this fight if like, can, uh, I can't go back man, that's so annoying, you know, I mean I can, it eventually works. I mean this game ended probably shortly after. I, I will try. 
altra. See, I need to open window because it's getting hot. Please, please have the replay system. No, it works eventually. Usually works, you know. Trzeba tylko poczekać. Wszystko, wszystko się, jak się poczeka, to się naprawi. To jest moje motto, man. Samochód mi się tak naprawił dwa razy. Komputer mi się tak naprawił. Komórka mi się dwa razy tak naprawiła. Lapek mi się naprawił. Trzeba tylko poczekać. To się kurwa nie naprawi. Teraz wracam. Uh, okay, I mean, I guess unlucky. It was working usually. I was actually going back in time in my replays when I was watching them and it was working just like last week. Oh, beautiful. You see? I was one, I, I was going to say that if you want to see the like end of this game, just go like check Kendrick HGC highlights or something. He probably has that and I would just swap to another game, but just wait and it will work. Uh, choose a talent. I can choose a talent. Shit, but my mouse is going to the other screen now. Okay, now it works. <clears throat> so I wanted to see like like the uh, you know ancestral Genji situation. You know? Maybe lack of communication, you know, between Dark Mook and mm, Regar here. Because like it is either either uh, Splendor just throw ancestor at Dark Mog and didn't say anything, or Dark Mog asked for it. Give me ancestor so I can go, you know. But it was probably ancestor just thrown on Dark Mog so he can go, which shouldn't be the case. Dark Mog could tell I don't know. I maybe have. It's a really tough situation, I guess, but you should, should like there should be some kind of communication either between Splendor. I would throw you ancestor. I watching you or like uh, I have stone skin. Like, like but they, like this is like I don't know how they will communicate there well. But like it is on regular now to get like well timed ancestor because they need zealots to for some reason will to turn. They need to jabate them, you know. But the ancestor needs to get good value and like spend I mean uh Dark Mode still had the stone skin which I checked after. Plus Genji needed Ancestor eventually later on. Plus also that instantly tells them there's no ancestor. Shit, what is this? Why this game is so close? Monkey S. What is this mosh pit, by the way? Like, fucking, what is this mosh pit even? Like, oh no, what the fuck? It's amazing that people walked into it. Did he get cleansed? Or oh, the mosh pit just timed out because it was not used at the stand? I mean, with mosh pit like this, for sure, Splendor could get really, like way better ancestral, and Sonya will get the nerves of steel. So this was like maybe pre like this like Sonia should say that he has a stone skill or something. Plus, you know, like the Cassia damage were, were was used to a degree, right? Like she used the ball and probably the D. So I think that there there was a misplay between uh, Sonia and Rick uh, here. I mean, granted, like there was awkward use of Mosh Pit too, which could like let. Liquid actually win that fight, and if they win that fight here, they actually might get the keep. 
you know. I don't think they end the game, it depends how much they kill. In the, uh, but it, it is Sonya and Greyman, it's a lot of damage. But yeah, I think he will easily get Ancestral on Genji here with such more speed. But granted, you know. Uh, he queued away because Sonya got Ancestral. That's why I've, I thought that it's maybe better to greet with the Ancestral. So Zealots will want to go in and maybe Mopsha would use that Q in instead of out. And then he throws the Ancestral, the you know. And But then the mosh pit could be somewhere else and maybe it will be harder for that splatter to throw it, you know, or something. Like that. Wait, did he die to fucking minions? Yeah, that's 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 why I said this is like the best fight Liquid can get just because also uh, of the minion pressure, you know. Hero slain. But that doesn't give anything. That doesn't give anything to Liquid because <laughs> they lost that team for anyway, and they get slain. some damage on uh, lane that every map should be two lane map to avoid situation like this so we have top lane on dk imagine if this was top lane uh, two lane map you know and there were like payloads moving you could even add a bridge and payload could move through bridge so actually the bridge would be useful instead of being like garbage zone of death i don't know this is such an th this area looks really nice but it's this rarely visited you know look how much screen time does this have when you play the game instead of getting like designers to do quest talents we could have more things like this but since no one cares about top lane on dragon knight we are getting quest talents i don't know we did that we did that mm. <coughs> Well, the situation still doesn't change. Like Liquid is unable to get uh, like strong team fights in, which is understandable because like Zeros have like, like kind of better comp. They could adjust uh, adjust with like the Genji top lane in mid game. Plus a plus, like they could maybe get this uh, fight played slightly better like they could not fail on the easy camp in like e early mid game but then again like zealots could also play better when they have the lead you know so this game is like going to end soon i guess first but if you have situation like this on the map what you want to do as liquid right like the lane when you have the highest chances of getting something is top lane but I don't think situation like that will happen anytime soon. Could happen possibly anytime soon for uh, for for them. I don't think Zelots will again like get on top lane and give Liquid such a nice fight. Don't think. Don't know what would what would need to happen to actually create such situation. Like the sieging power of. What Liquid needs to do is basically push bottom, pretty much. That's that's what they have to do. Five man push bottom, maybe someone soaks mid, and that's it. They 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 can't care about top lane. They have like two levels of still being alive in this game, which they can use only in one way. Is just to be you know monkeys bottom lane. Maybe there's a lot of fucks up, and we are decently close to each other. We can't care. We have uh, as I said, like one and half a level. Of letting the hacker get getting value on top, but we have to start open opening them up or looking for pickups. You know, mm. I think Liquid actually has decent D push of the DK. I guess they have like Game and Genji, Sonya. Um, I mean, it's it is Tasa that and Cassia for uh, Zealots to push plus DK. I mean, it's still double support. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's a uh, uh, like core pushing with DK comp or not, like five v five scenario. You know, maybe it is because it's double support still. Like I guess the hacker takes it, the DK in such situation. I would imagine. I don't think I would put Tasadar into DK. 
And you think if DK, if the, the hacker is DK, it is maybe like core threatening. I don't know if like core wrecking, but core threatening for sure. Uh, or like, I mean, the keep and then they could like posture around, you know, and look what they can do. But it is likely that uh, Liquid can depush it. It is annoying because they have only one support. So. But as I said, they, they just should probably use uh, the two levels they have to open bottom lane and maybe get a kill. Granted, the hacker can push, uh, the hacker can just burrow and there's going to be 5v5, but they are losing the game and they are losing it hard, right? Technically, unless they see, unless they see that they, uh, unless they think like they can win the team fight, the 5v5, because this one they could potentially win. But it was a bad fight for uh, Zealots to take it there, just uh, because of the minions and uh, uh, and they didn't want it to commit, so they did some damage. But yeah, that's I think the only way that uh, Liquid can deal with the situation. They kind of do it. They have one on mid, that's on bottom. So it's doing easy hard camp. Defek, Defek, Defek. I will get tilted in here only. And then 3 man wash and then GG. Yeah, so that would that, that, that would be on Kendrick highlights, I guess. Or like Grabbies or whoever does the YouTube highlights. I mean Blizzard also do this, but yeah. If if the replay stacks, then you could watch that ending on someone's YouTube, I guess. So let's go on the draft first again. Towers of Doom was the map. Uh, so that was first picking. So Liquid. That was Liquid's uh, map choice. Uh, Genshi ban, the hacker ban. Interestingly enough, I mean, a battle is not banned, but. Uh, I don't know, I actually wasn't following the meta. If the a battle fell off. The meta. I mean, the, it, it eventually people learn to counter. I don't think it's that strong on towers as it is or was on other maps. Uh, but uh, the liquid bans could make Zalot think about liquid thinking about potential abattu, you know, pick or something. Um, but it's the meta when you have the Illidan with Hunt, right? It's the meta with Illidan with Hunt. Fucking one year after. It could already be a fucking thing if people let me to bet that. It's not a meme, Hunt is good. Uh, okay, so Genji obviously like same kind of reason as for the Dragon. He rotates really fast. He has very good interrupting. And like overall, like he's just fucking good hero. Why do I say he has good rotation or Interrupting, he's just good at everything, right? I think Tassadar is really good against him. And the draft should be yet, around, yet, around, yet again oriented around Tassadar, but I guess it is, maybe. Uh, Zealots open with Anup, which I think is like, I mean, Anup got nerfed now, but like, if we talk about like a month ago, or like a few weeks ago, and like all that time ago, then like Anup by far. Towers of Doom is his best map because his cooldowns are really low. Coco is fucking broken overall. It took time for people to swap from Lockwood, but you know. On this map, you can do so much with it. You can either win 1v1 and capture the uh, altar, right? You can engage with it uh, in between altar phases. You can disengage with it in between altar phases. The Anup on his own is unlikely to die in between altar phases. So it is really good map for him. And he got nerfed slightly. I mean, he got like, he got nerfed a little bit, but still you can do the same things, I guess, but he's nerfed, but still, you know. So yeah, first pick Anup really is solid ping. I would probably always first pick, you know, Anup on this map, really. You can go wrong with it. Uh, Liquid uh, follows I mean, the content is that or like answer that with uh, Illidan and Ariel. 
which I don't know what I don't know what to think about that. Because Algorand is really good support against Illidan. But I don't like her that much with it, but Illidan our uh, Illidan Lunara is pretty nice comp in some cases. Not especially I don't think on this map, but on the Chaos Hollow it's pretty nice. If it fits. Um and then Aurel I guess is fine with with that but Why not Tassadar, you know? Tassadar is just like good against uh, Anub because he deals decent damage to him. He is the second support which helps against Kokon. He opens Kokon fast. But the only thing is that Aurel is like somehow, you know, good against Illidan, but is he good against is she good against Illidan Tassadar? Thinking face, you know. That also, that also, you know, that pick opened up the Tassadar Tracer. You know, like, alone Tracer is not that big of a, like, problem for Illidan. Depends how the comp is built. Like, if, if it's solo Tracer against Illidan Tassadar, then Illidan Tassadar is stronger than the Tracer, in, mo in most cases, because Tracer just doesn't do shit to him in that uh, scenario. Like, in order for Tracer to be stronger than Illidan, she cannot be on a composition that Illidan pushes more, you know, because like Tracer is not gonna just like randomly create pressure on Tassadar Illidan composition, but Illidan Tassadar can just jump straight on her team and pre like, you know, like pressure because Tracer will not pressure him, you know what I mean, right? And then like Tracer can do that much to like peel the Illidan off with damage because she just auto attacks and bomb that he can metamorphosis, so. Uh, so I don't like I I don't like this pig I think uh, I don't know. Then the buns, so lots buns Uther. Don't don't I don't like this ban either I think. It's fine I guess because like. They probably think it's Hunt Illidan, I guess, and for Hunt Illidan, like, uh, Divine Shield might be good. But there's not much damage that you can, you want to Divine Shield, because, like, the, he's gonna get Crystal Ages on Bomb, right? But I guess it's fine, because this will be a global, if he goes for Hunt. So in that scenario, the Divine Shield might be somehow good. I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess they won anyway, but it's not necessarily the ban that needed to be done. Like, they could maybe uh, ban, I don't know, you know Grayman, because Grayman is somehow good against, you know, a Tracer. She, he can, uh, like, trade with her, and, like, you know, like, he's not squishy. So, like, they will deny a tough carry, I guess, you know, but then again, like, Liquid could, could maybe go into Nazebo, but that would be awkward. When was the last time we saw Nazebo, you know? They could ban Gul'dan if they were scared of it, but I guess they were not. I mean, it is it is a fine ban. It is a fine ban, you know? So, but I, I don't think it is necessary. Actually, maybe it is the best one. Tracer have more, more freedom, I guess. They have the stance from Anu. I mean, I guess it's fine ban. I think Grayman could be also banned, but... It's fine. I mean, maybe they think like Raymond has no poke, so he can interrupt really, so it's not worth to ban him. And Uther can, and plus have the stuns for early game. It kind of feel like maybe a self ban too, to a degree, because they could maybe pick it, but like, Regal is nice on this map because he can do the camp, you know. Uther with Maltil is just retarded though, by the way. It is retarded. They could make they could also ban the Lunara, but they don't have to, I guess, because of Tracer. But Lunara is good against Maltil. I don't know if they saw the Maltil. Maybe they, maybe they just pick it against Diablo. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be Maltil last pick, but whatever. Liquid bans Sonia, which I don't know if it's needed. Because if it's if it's I mean at this point what they can ban, you know, like. You're like, oh, fuck, Tracer Tassadar, fuck my life, right? What do, what do you ban? It doesn't matter, like, Zalots will get something that they will be fine with anyway. So they ban some kind of counter 
for uh, for the Illidan, but the thing is Sonya shouldn't be that big of a problem. If it's Hunt Illidan, he can kill Sonya like if someone helps. And if Sonya is like laning against him, he can hunt into a team fight. So like it shouldn't be that big of a problem in team fights, maybe, but not not you know like. But maybe they saw that they will have to pick Lunara, and they were like, okay, so we're not gonna have much CC against Sonya, so let's just remove her. Plus, you know, Sonya does other potential Rega is hard to deal with, I guess, especially as you know double support comb with like Illidan and Lunara. So I guess it's fine. Uh, and they f pick uh, Brightwing and Diablo afterwards. Uh, that's it, Kappa. <laughs> Don't know what to say about this really. Mm, Diablo is somehow. Uh, I think Varian is like underrated at, at this moment, at this moment for some reason. Varian is really good against the multi. It's like I think I, I just think he's overrated at the moment. Overrated, underrated, underrated. Why, why Diablo is better than Varian, for example? It's not like, oh, Varian because they have Tassadar. Like, Varian is just good against Anup, he's good against, like, eventually against, uh, you know, Tass, but you don't have to go the Shield Destroyer, you can go, like, the Heal Reduction if they go for Maltil. Hmm. And then Bride Ring. And... This just looks like an awkward one. This could be easily Tassadar, you know. I shouldn't waste that much time on the draft either anyway, right? I should go over it slightly faster, so... Uh, then my Salads get the Rekkar and Maltil, because they saw the Diablo, I guess, and my Liquid just counters uh, Maltil with Lunara, the, the pick itself, but composition-wise, not sure if it's like a good pick, but... Like, Liming could be fine, I think. Like, it could, like, it should be, probably. Like if if they went for some reason with Elite and Aurel, it could be something. Not sure if Sheetwing, maybe Sheetwing still. Sheetwing still. They could get Rekka, but then they get Mal. It's awkward. Not sure about the Sheetwing. It's it could be even Aquator. But what, what then? The Haka is banned. Do they get Leoric? Do they care about Leoric? I don't think they care about Leoric. This could be Abbott, maybe. And then they get... Uh, but it's Afghard because it's Aurel, you know. But if they get... Uh, it, then it's not Abbottur, but it's like Malfurion or Monk, you know. Which Monk isn't that bad against Tracer. It's actually good against Tracer. So that, this could be Illidan, Aurel, Monk, Varian, uh, Liming, you know. It, I don't know what they would last pick then, and maybe they would adjust differently because they see Varian and uh, Monk. But yeah. And I don't feel the draft. I don't feel the draft here. Because how Liquid is dealing damage to Zelots if it's 5v5, right? Yes, Tracer have to, has to be careful to a degree, right? Because there's the ship hunt potential. Uh, Diablo's uh, church. Like, Diablo is unlike, like, I, I don't really like the uh, Diablo pick on this map. And when I was watching, like, Liquid games, you know, and whenever they hit Diablo on this map, the Diablo was feeding, I don't know. And then he never had the souls. Like, it usually was, like, five days early on. I don't know. Don't never like Diablo from them on this map. We'll see if this will be the case in this game, but okay, let, let's just get up. Let's let's get over this draft, maybe. Ready, ready, ready. Local player, debated. I'm not not a professional, not even ex, not anything. Just fucking local player. Just fucking local player, man. Fist Batman. Why can't I move? No game. Okay. The battle begins. 
Ten seconds, you say? Four, one, fight. Okay. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Okay. So, Zealot stacks mid as five. Liquid splits. I guess yet again they feel like they can't, uh, they can't trade, which is you know true. But they probably can't. But Tassadar would just stack his level one sooner. Ideally, you want to not let him stack it before the first altar phase. But whether you can do that or not. Wait, Kappa. Hmm. The the the, the in-game sounds now fits the situation because I need to think about it, you know. I mean, they played with the pre-nerfed level 1 auto attack talent, right? I mean, I get it's Illidan. And like Lunara... I mean, he waved this faster. I mean, okay, this is maybe fine. They expect Illidan to split push. And they will want Tassadar to be the counter. So this additional damage like helps with clearing the wave in time. Because this is like what annoys me when I play Hero League especially. And we clearly see that opponents will have something that clears. And we will be behind. And the, the first altar phase spawns, the second altar phase spawns. And like there would be multiple situations in which we have lane pushed and your, your monkeys will want to just group us four. And in draft, no one speaks a hero that will be able to decently like depush the lanes in such situations. Because you have a fun, like you have people just speaking like something that can't clear, and opponents have something that clears and will rotate. You know. So I always try to think on this map to get a hero that can avoid such situation from happening. Like uh, if I'm last hero and I see no one of us is clear, and I have to pick a tank or something, I pick a tank with some kind of wave clear. You know that can uh, like, you know, stop that potential thing from happening. Or if it's a carry, I pick a carry that has some kind of wave key that can do it decently fast, you know, be it even Sylvanas, you know, like Sylvanas is like, she's gonna do it safely too, you know, and deep push that, but in this case here, it's probably going to be Tassada that's going to deep push it. And that's maybe why that talent together with the fact that they have the Illidan and maybe he feels like he will not do that much damage to, ta to Diablo with the auto attacks which I don't think is the case because the Tassadar actually does shit tons of fucking damage with the level 1 yeah. you know oh what the fuck okay <clears throat> mm, so yeah, they clear bottom they can push now which is nice this is really nice and uh, really good because like every time you can get structured damage on uh, towers of doom fucking do it you know like getting two reds is extremely good on this map because eventually it allows you to take the forts more easily because you don't have to kill the uh, two reds first it allows you to come back way easier because you can directly go for the fort instead of getting two reds you know so this is really good I believe I was talking about that. I always talk about this whenever I'm with a team. But that's obvious, like, I mean, that should be obvious. Like, why, like, then you get the like, heroic people that are like, why don't we rotate? You know, I had it recently, like, people just like, why don't we rotate? I feed it on bottom. But dude, you just fucking had to do what Tassara is doing here, so the experience. Your fucking team just got one turret and half uh, damage on wall. You don't have to type, why don't you rotate, you know? Just be fucking happy and don't die. So this is a really nice uh, value gain by the lots. They like uh, they have also, it seems, uh, 
better rotating power, like better dueling, because um, Liquid does not have Lidan with them, and they also have double support. Plus it's Diablo, which is immobile, so he can technically get punished easier. It's Nothing really happens, like stay lane on top. Now, now this is like one of the important situations too. What team should always think about on this map is uh, whether they should start their easy or wait, how to explain it properly? Because like, like usually teams try to do easy, right? And there's a way to play it better than normal right you can trade it is like fine but if you know that your opponent will look to do the easy camp which they usually will do and you can realize that you have a better composition to fight them early invade their camp right if your comp can't inv invade them even if they started the easy just do yours but again you have to keep in mind if opponents could invade you because they have a good comp for early fight an easy camp right so if that's the case you can start your camp because if opponents have brain they will punish you if like if they are close to which usually they will because like the first altar spawn teams group up here like isn't, isn't the case here because uh, of the damage they did uh, at the start of the game and the fact that minions are pushing mid but normal game when that doesn't happen both teams are, are at easy camps and you can snowball from this. It usually ends like it, it usually. I don't know even like GC, but like in screams, it usually happens. Someone just speed skier and it snowballs. I think it was actually the case uh, with expert game part one. I think it was maybe against Liquid. They like they feed it like that. That was super grief game. I, I don't know. If they could have win it. I think they they grief like every fucking second, every minute. You know. Okay. There's no one using chat at all. Him. Second to that death. That's really, that's really good. So, Zalot's really bad for Liquid. Uh, Zalot's get obviously two altars just out of the map control. There's no even, like, what is also bad here, like, the Illidan could do camps. He even has the talent to do camps. Uh, but he, like, they're not gonna kill. Uh, um, the Maltir, right? Uh, it's not going to be like Diablo will rotate and they will kill him. They will not kill Maltir ever. Plus, they're losing losing their rotations. I'm just thinking if they could do something against that. Like it probably should be Blightwing top, right? And they could look uh, for the level. I mean, the first altar spawn. Uh, easy camp abuse, right? Like m maybe with the double support, Brightwing being top, potential 4v5, they could uh, invade, you know. But but the, still, the mid situation was bad for them. But it could they could maybe do that, or at very least, they could maybe do this, you know. But it's still hard to tell because this is really bad lane. Like nothing can happen here. Plus, they're losing form, so they are losing everything. They're losing rotation, they're losing solo. I mean, they're not losing solo lane, but the solo lane is not able to achieve anything at any point. Even if there's a gank coming, most likely uh, Malti will not die. Plus, they are losing camps. They don't have camp control, you know. And they are losing structures, which is really bad on this map. We don't want to get opponents free damage of your structures. Uh, yeah, they, they even like, stop. they even going to lose some top. Ah, but okay, but we died on bottom. Like that. Oh. Okay, it is getting some damage in, which is nice. On the wall, we're gonna lose on like a wall on top. I mean, like two red on top, I guess. Okay. That that is that is starting to be pretty big, you know, for the lots in terms of like the. Uh, 
walls that are open you know top is pretty open you know top mid is open already and bottom is slowly getting open At seven, like this is juicy, you know. Like Zelot should look at it and think, like, okay, that's what we want to take. Unless you know, yeah, I mean, I guess it's party alley they look for that. Yeah, this is good. Maltiel does not have to fucking beat up. This is what they really want. They can trade some experience because they are in the lead. It's not like Bridewing is top. So it's not like if the top laner decides to stop, I mean, stay top. It will not create a bad situation for the lots because the top laner will not be able to reach uh, bottom in time to help. So because it's not right, right? And that moves makes them be able to like uh, invade this camp. It is like on the Dragon Shire, you know, we had the liquid being five, but then Sonya went top and from a situation that Zealots shouldn't invade, it, there was a situation fr in which they actually could invade because Sonya was away and they get value out of it. But here Zealots will group up as five and get it, you know. So they're not letting like a mistake happen. Not not to say like it could maybe not happen anyway because like Zealot could just back off, right? It is unlikely that they die with the setup they have. It is like similar situation to the Dragon Shire game too. Like it was unlikely that um, Zelot's foreman will get punished, even if they invade or do something aggressive. And yeah, that's probably going to be that. The Liquid was unaware and uncareful about what Zelot's is doing and how they're prepared for that invade with the multi rotating. Grandpa doing the dark mook, but it's fine. Here. They get another set of two reds. So every wipe they get on liquid or like uh, like tick two kills, you know, up will be devastating for liquid because their forts are open and it can easily get to like such snowballing situation you know like uh, that that fort fort rotation you know opponent just kill one by one Liquid somehow finds ways to like trade a little bit and get like the damage on uh, walls, which is nice. <sighs> this is scary. Okay. Yeah, this is this is really good. The what the fuck? This damage is so unfair. What the fuck? <laughs> Nice, report Polyk for abusing, like what is this shit? Okay, I mean he had to be dead anyway, but what the fuck? She didn't let the last attack from the multi, but whatever. That was nicely prepared for Liquid, I mean, um, from Zelots. That ma what game it was? It was Tilt game? But they were like 1-1, one -one, right? Because that was kind of, that was Tilt, I don't know. That shouldn't happen. 
like Zealous shouldn't get such skill on Liquid because that position shouldn't happen, you know. Like opponents are ahead, they are successfully zoning you whole game long on the rotations. So probably you would not be able to contest this again, not only because it's 10-9, but also because you were never able to contest them before. So, uh, you know, why wouldn't they try to get, do something sneaky like that on a hero that they know that he has to stay on top lane to some experience, you know? So that allows them to potentially take fort, I guess, because they could get easy camp and maybe yes, another one. We'll see. Your powers will be more. Oh, I get the top like one now. Yeah. Look at this. So we want Olic to recall and rejoin bottom, I think. But I mean, we can push the lane side, the lane and the neutral like that. We can drop it, I guess, maybe. I mean, they, they know opponents are here, they can keep them here, I guess, and maybe they can pressure a kill on the lead on. Grandpa is rotating. So I guess they want to pressure top, but Grandpa will be in close distance to eventually help. Yeah. Because he doesn't have to get this lane. They want to get value here, I guess, and they want to, like, make sure that uh, Liquid is in off guard position. Uh, what I mean by that is that the easy will soon reach the fort and they, they are un they feel unsafe about starting this camp. Hero League player would just go clear this wave, but it's useless. They are already in level lead, half and one level lead. They are in super way super I mean they're in superior map control, right? Like easy is pushing and all waves they can and they are snowballing for now. I kind of feel like they could. Uh, I don't. I guess. I guess. I guess it's fine. Kind of feel like they could pressure here with that easy and post, like the, you know. Uh, I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. I mean, they don't have to do much, you know. It depends if this explodes, cause like, I I hate to end the camps and don't explode, you know. It's always such a waste for me, you know. But they actually pressure, pressure the elite on high enough. And this is ballsy, but it's double support, I guess. That's why the Uther maybe could be good because he wants to go hunt on this map, right? And like, Elida can dodge the bomb with metamorphosis, but not when he has hunt, I guess. But like, it's still maybe they should adjust. I mean, they could adjust, right? They don't, have, they don't, they don't need the global from hunt if they have bright ring. What's the chance of them bursting someone on on hunt, or like Zelots being uh, uncareful with their position? Probably un, un, not likely to happen at this point in the game. Maybe they could adjust the game plan at ten, and after they saw that they're losing the pack, maybe it should be metamorphosis and driving splitting. You know, it might be a threat. But yeah, that's why. I, don't like a little bit. Like it's fine what they did here, I guess. But I kind of feel like they could leave Maltil top. Tracer recalls go bottom. Someone soaks them, meet, and they move towards bottom. But and make the camp explode on bottom. But maybe in their mind it was not going to be a threat, you know. But now they get a fight on bottom, which might be very good for them, I guess. That's why I don't like the album here. <laughs> so. yeah. Team with two globals get abused by no globals. Oh, that is really bad for Liquid now. Who baited me into watching this game, actually? Yeah, that is really terrible now. 
They can, oh, they can, yeah, they can press a bot. Like, what the liquid can do even yeah, at this point in the game. As I said, I mean, the team fighting is like. I know, I really think this is like a draft draft mistake. Like, really the huge one. I was talking about it in the draft when I was going over it. Like, I, they could get the Brightwing top lane instead of Illidan and just try to do something with Illidan, but I don't know if, if they even can then. I mean, bro. They're more likely to get something done in the bottom part of the map early in the game, you know. I, I don't know, but it's, it's just really awkward enough even for this to get something done like that. Hmm. Anyway, it's going to be 16 to no 16. It's like... It, like Plus, there is the fact that I was talking about why Anub is so good on this map. You can't fucking punish them. Like, you can't... Anub will escape. He will let other escape, you know, with the Coco. Like, you just can't get a comeback on that hero on this map. Unless his opponents are just complete monkeys or you comp is better. And even though you get snowballed on, just because at some point your comp is just better and or you, equal, you make the level equals, you can get back, but... Doesn't look like it's the case in this game though. Like it's not even safe for like us on DK map, uh, Dragonshire uh, map, they had to do like five man bottom to do something, you know. In this game it's not that safe for them because of the compositions, you know. If they do that they're just gonna die, you know, most likely. And they can't ever, they can't ever create a situation in which Illidan can get value out of hand in this game. But this is an attempt, somehow, I guess, for a pre-16 fight. But I guess Zalots just fe feel stronger anyway with the draft, so they don't mind taking it. I will need to look at the lead and so on. Cocon on the Aurel and the lead and step. The lead and Cocon, what? 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 Tyson is even full HP with shield. I mean, I, that must be misclick, I guess. Liquid should be, shouldn't be even happy. Wait, what? I could get punished for that. I mean, he has, he has to do that, but he could die if Ariel doesn't react in time. But the thing is, Liquid can't even be happy after this minor victory. It's not even victory, you know, like, who the fuck cares, you know? This is 3 to 32. It's not as bad as an A, but uh, they had to know that Mopsha fucked up, like that the Kokon was misclicked, and that's the only reason why they won that fight, right? So that could not increase their spirit at all. That does not increase morale, you know. You, you won the team fight, but it's not like yes, guys, we actually can do it. We can win team fights now. No, there's one other person. No, and that was just a mistake. But I think m people should move more aggressively with the Akmok here. Even though that was really YOLO, but... <laughs> were they clearing mid lane or something? I guess they were. But they should move with him, because like, he, like... Like, they need... They need to be stuck getting deaths on opponents. If they... Like, mistakes happens. Zalots did mistake. 
you need to obviously as hide as you can because you lost the game anyway so like it doesn't matter even even if he dies here you know if it was hero league or something and he dies there maybe it looks like a monkey it doesn't matter because they're losing the game and they have to do something anyway so it doesn't matter if he dies in a game that will be lost anyway but he dies trying you know and it's fine but i mean maybe uh they had different idea maybe they wanted to pass this for some reason just get bottom and like look for 16 16 fight uh, oh yeah i mean I uh, he, he was scared of uh, ship, I guess, eventually. Yeah. I mean, he will also not miss a bomb, but whatever, it's, it's still good. They're gonna get this camp. 16 it's fine. Oh, Diablo went in. I mean, guess it's fine. Because uh, it looks like it's un. un uh, how you call it? Uncommunicated. Let's say it's a correct word for this situation. I don't think it is, but let's say this situation is uncom not communicated well. Fuck. Whatever. The thing is, if they pass this, they lose this fourth, and they probably lose mid fourth, and maybe even top fourth or something, you know. So they're in a really bad situation. So even though it's 16-15, that is most likely the best situation for I mean, the best opportunity for them to fight. Especially that the camp is not ca captured yet, because it, if it was captured, then like I don't even know if that's a good situation for them, because it's 1615 and the camp, you know. Mm, but it seems like they were not on the same page, because Diablo's going to eat a lot of damage now. Aurel is in upgrade position too now. He might get cocooned. Yeah, she got cocooned instantly. Yeah, Ilian has no hunt and he has like against double support everyone full HP. Like, yeah. hmm. like they couldn't probably even abuse that situation because no hunt but the thing is they they get it, they get bottom, they get meat. Hero slain. Uh, and it's probably game or something, you know. <laughs> so they kinda had to maybe to try it, but since they were not on the same page yet, maybe they should just uh, calm down the situation, but <laughs> calm down Kappa, you know, and just like group up here and just engage here, you know, let them take this and get on them. Uh, not not really take them, uh, let them take it, but let them start dealing damage to it and engage on them uh, when you get like slightly more HP or something. But it is just like, it's no bolt, and I don't think it was a good comp and good like, I don't think it was drafted well, you know. And then, like, obviously, there was mistakes. Maybe they could lane differently, but it would probably not change much, you know. The thing happens anyway, that will probably happen even if they don't engage, you know. That, that would be the same outcome, you know. But they stagger one more death, which is GG. Okay.